in this lab we'll be discussing the muscles of the trunk. On the muscle practical checklist we'll be on column number two. Let's begin by looking at the anterior trunk. We'll focus on the two muscles that we see up in the chest area. The first muscle on our checklist is the pectoralis major muscle. Right, this is a muscle we can see that actually attaches to the sternum and it actually is cut off up here but it's actually coming from the clavicle a bit also. Uh, you can see the fibers coming across and they actually attach to the arm and they actually go to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. When this muscle contracts it causes the humerus or the shoulder joint to flex, adduct, internally rotate or medially rotate either or and then do horizontal adduction. So the pec major we could see is a very uh, the superficial muscle and a lot of people when they go to the gym they try to work this out it makes their chest look bigger. In order to see the next muscle we actually need to remove the pectoralis major. So on this side the pectoralis major you could see was removed and we see a muscle over here. This is going to be the pectoralis minor. Again the only way we could see that is by removing the major. Now these um, pectoralis minor we can see attaching to the second through the fifth ribs. Then the fibers go up and notice they don't go to the humerus, right? The humerus would be over here. They actually go to the coracoid process of the scapula and that was that anterior piece of bone um, that was on the facing the front of the chest. So when this muscle contracts it's not going to move the humerus, it's actually going to move the scapula. It's actually going to bring the scapula forward and we would call that protraction. This is our head and neck model. So here we can see the pectoralis major on both sides. And on this side we took the pectoralis major off and you can see uh, the, the, it on the right over here it was removed on the left and then we catch a little bit of the pec minor over here. It will catch the whole thing but it's going up to the coracoid process about there and then we can see it on the second rib and third rib over here. That brings us to the muscles of respiration. So the first muscles we're going to look at are actually between the ribs these muscles we called intercostals. So just as a rule of thumb, whenever there's a muscle called external, and we're going to see this with the abdominal obliques and these muscles here, the fibers run in the direction as if we were putting our hand in our pocket. So they do look like they're running a little bit from uh, lateral to medial. These muscles are also going to be superficial. So if you notice this one here, the fibers run kind of in the direction as if this model was putting his hands in his pocket and this is a superficial muscle. Opposed to an internal muscle, there the fibers are going to run perpendicular to the external muscle and you can see it's going to be deep. So just kind of keep that rule of thumb in the back of your mind. So the first one on our list is the external intercostal. And again, they're going to run between the ribs. When these muscles contract, they actually elevate the rib cage during inhalation. Right? So when we breathe in, say you take a deep breath in and you lift up your rib cage, it was the external intercostals that did that for you. The internal intercostals, they are going to do the opposite. When they contract, they're going to pull the rib cage down. Now, on norm, normal exhalation, we really don't need any muscles to bring the rib cage down. The weight of the chest is enough. However, if we need to force air out, such as coughing, right, or somebody's having difficulty breathing, uh, breathing out. Sometimes we see that with, with emphysema patients. Then they'll be using their internal intercostals. Right? So during normal quiet breathing you probably are not using your internal intercostals. Okay? So external intercostals elevate the rib. Inhalation. Internal intercostals depress the ribs during forced exhalation. 
the next muscle that's a respiration muscle is the diaphragm so this is a picture or a model that we have that we have of the diaphragm if you see the diaphragm is a big dome shaped muscle when we're breathing out the muscle looks something like this when we take a breath in the muscle actually flattens right? and then we breathe out it becomes a dome we breathe in it flattens so this is our main muscle of quiet breathing right if you're sitting now watching this uh, lab right you're using most likely just your diaphragm to breathe and right? this is a picture from the underside Next semester in AMP2, you'll take a look at these different uh, openings in the diaphragm. You know, things like the aorta, the esophagus, the vena cava are all going to pass through there. So that, uh, you'll look at that in more detail next term. All right, so those are our three muscles of respiration. The external intercostals, internal intercostals, and diaphragm. That brings us to the muscles of the abdomen. We're going to take a look at four muscles. The first three we can see from this view on the torso. The most midline, and you can see it here on the deep side really, really well, is going to be the rectus abdominis. And we can see it on this side too, but there's some aponeurosis over it and some fascia on the superficial side but you can see it underneath there then we'll take a look at the external oblique again remember the rule external fibers are going to run as if we we're putting our hand in our pocket and they're going to be superficial so it's going to be on the superficial side and then we'll take a look at the internal uh, ex uh, abdominal oblique right which would be deep to the external so let's start with the rectus abdominis first this muscle starts way down over here on the pubic bone and then it goes up all the way up to the xiphoid process over here and these lower costal cartilages of our, of our lower ribs. However, take a look at the length of this muscle. This is actually a very long muscle and in order to gain uh, more bio biomechanical strength, the muscle has actually been divided into one, two, three, four compartments on this muscle and then you can see over here one, two, three, four compartments on the right muscle over here. The structures that divide the muscle into compartments is this fibrous tissue right here and I labeled it as the tendinous inscriptions. Right, So these divide the muscle into compartments. Here's another one and here's another one over here. So these are the tendinous inscriptions. When the right rectus abdominis and the left rectus abdominis are united, there's fibrous tissue right here in the midline that connects the left and right rectus abdominis muscle. That structure is called the linea alba. Linea means line. Alba means white, so that's that white line. Now, the rectus abdominis, when we contract both sides, will actually cause us to do a crunch. If you went to the gym today to work out these muscles, you maybe lay on the bench or the floor and you'll do a crunch. So the action would be flexion of the trunk, right? So it actually bends our trunk forward. Okay, so that's the rectus abdominis. Right, you also need to know the tendinous inscriptions, linea alba. Right, and then the muscle will cause us to flex the trunk. The next abdominal muscle is going to be the external abdominal oblique. All right, so again, I know I said it before, but these are the fibers that are running as if we're putting our hand in our pocket. If this model could put his hand in his pocket, right, his fingers would go right along this way in the same direction. And you can see the muscle superficial. So this is the external abdominal oblique. When this muscle contracts, it actually turns our trunk to the opposite side. So in this case, it's the right external abdominal oblique if we were to contract that muscle the whole torso would turn to the left right it actually does what we call contralateral rotation the third muscle 
we can see here on the deep side is going to be the internal abdominal oblique. Now again, in order to see this, we need to take off the external abdominal oblique. So you notice the external abdominal oblique would be running kind of in this direction and it's been removed. So the internal oblique runs perpendicular and it's going to be deep. This muscle actually causes a same side rotation. So uh, if we contracted this muscle on the left, it would actually rotate our torso to the left and that would be ipsilateral rotation. Now there's one more abdominal muscle that we cannot see from this uh, this view. That muscle lies deep to all of these muscles and the fibers run transverse. They run across and it almost is like a belt. They sometimes call it the corset muscle. So the only way that we can see this muscle is to take the abdominal plate off and turn it around. Now on deep to the muscles you can see these fibers running straight across this way. This would be the transversus abdominis, right? Transversus abdominis. This muscle does not cause any movement of the trunk. All it does is it compresses the abdomen, kind of like tightens up the abdomen. And that's another reason we can call it the corset muscle. If you think about a corset, what would it do? It would just kind of constrict or tighten up the abdomen. All right, so that's our fourth abdominal muscle.